Hi there! The Northeast Indiana Farm to School team is proud to share our Harvest of the Month video series. In each video, we will visit a different farm in Northeast Indiana to learn where our food comes from. We will be able to meet our farmers and learn how they grow each of our Harvest of the Month fruits and vegetables. Welcome to Joy Field Farm. Meet Cliff and Arlene Kindy. They are the farmers at Joy Field Farm, where they have grown rhubarb and many other fruits and vegetables for 39 years. This beautiful seven acre farm is located in the northeast corner of Wabash County, Indiana, near the towns of North Manchester and South Whitley. This Indiana farmer, that's me, is named Cliff Kindy. And we live here on a farm we've called Joyfield Farm. Our daughters named that when we moved here many years ago. Well, when we were first married, we started to grow a garden for our eating. That's what we lived on. We were in college and decided a good way to save money was to grow our own food. So since then we've grown pretty good sized gardens and now it's about the largest it's ever been, two and a half, three acres. You know, rhubarb grows in soil, in the, in the earth, in the ground that is here. When we first moved here to Joyfield Farm, the soil was pretty run down. And it, it's a sandy loam, so it's hard to hold, hold moisture. And if you have a drought year, you usually have a crop failure. And we decided we were going to try to have good soil. Sandy loam is a type of soil that naturally contains a mixture of sand, silt, and clay. Let's learn how Farmer Cliff uses compost and cover crops to improve sandy loam soil at Joy Field Farms. We have nine compost piles around the garden. This is just the, the weeds and the, the leaves from the rhubarb and grass clippings and kitchen scraps. And that's our, that's our fertilizer. That's our energy to grow things. And we put lots of compost tons and tons of compost on the garden. Compost is made naturally from rotting food scraps, garden trimmings, grass clippings, and leaves. In a compost pile, these discarded materials fall apart and turn into a dark, crumbly material called humus. Humus contains lots of nutrients, such as nitrogen. Adding compost or humus to the soil helps plants grow by holding moisture in. And then we plant a cover crop. A cover crop is a plant that adds nutrients to the soil, that maybe opens up air passageways and water passageways down into the soil. And so we put lots of cover crops. So each year, instead of leaving the land bare after we harvest peas, for instance, we'll put a a cover crop of oats and soybeans. So the oats adds humus to the soil and the soybeans add nitrogen to the soil. So both of those are very important for growing plants. Humus is the, the plant matter that becomes part of the soil that holds the moisture and gives the moisture to the earth, to the plants when they need water. Now, when we have a drought year, the humus in the soil keeps the moisture there lots longer. So it's like put, having an irrigation system, only it's in our soil, just easy to use. And so we're trying to do things that are sustainable, that make good crops, that when you grow up to be a farmer, when each of you become a farmer, the soil will still be good ready for you to use. The, the garden, market garden, is fairly big for a garden, but um, we don't do everything all at once. People say, oh, it's a lot of work, but it is work, but we don't have to do it all at once. So you do a little bit here, a little bit there, and 
It just adds up to the whole garden when you're done in the summer. I like Joyfield because I can hear the birds. You can probably hear them now. And I like to hear the frogs and the birds in the marsh. We're right next to Audubon um, land. So we can hear the birds. And I like the, just the peacefulness, except when the cars are going by. But it's peaceful most of the time. We grow about 60 kinds of fruits and vegetables, uh, like carrots and cabbage and peas, onions, raspberries, strawberries, broccoli, squash, potatoes, on and on. Let's listen as Farmer Arlene and Farmer Cliff tell us how they grow rhubarb at Joy Field Farm. Well, rhubarb's easy to grow, so it was a an easy thing to start and you don't doesn't have many pests and you can just kind of let it go pick it we pick it all summer well people sometimes ask us how long a rhubarb plant will, will exist well how long it'll last and we planted ours 39 years ago and we still have it so i guess it lasts for a while but I, my guess is that those roots that grow the rhubarb the rhizomes just keep growing new rhizomes and expanding. So what is originally one little plant becomes a clump of plants. The rhubarb plant is a perennial plant that can live for many years. Rhubarb is also a rhizome plant. Rhizome plants have an underground plant stem that produces stems and roots of a new plant each year as it grows and expands in your garden. These are rhubarb flowers. So if you want this kind of rhubarb plant, you want to take a section of the rhizome, a, a section of the root, and cut that off and plant that in good soil. That's how you'll get more like this. But the flower just pulls energy from making leaves like this, so we usually pull the flower and put it on the compost pile. <laughs> Here on Joyfield Farm, we probably have 150 to 200 clumps of rhubarb. Last year we sold over 700 pounds of rhubarb. It's a major crop because you just keep harvesting it. Like six months of the year, you can harvest rhubarb. How do you harvest rhubarb? You could harvest about every day, but just let different parts of the garden keep growing so that it keeps renewing itself. Yesterday I was picking rhubarb for an order, and I counted 100 stalks on one clump that I picked. And I, I pull it so that if you cut it off, it leaves a little bit of stalk and it tends to spoil. And you don't want the rhubarb cluster to have spoil spots in it. So I pull it very carefully straight out of the ground so that it breaks off just below the surface. And when you pick a stalk, we usually cut off the leaves. When I'm harvesting, I usually select the larger ones. But sometimes I want to get the other ones out, even the ones that are more spindly. So I'll pull those as well, and they're fine to eat. It, if it comes out of, the, out of the plant, it's probably ready to eat at any point. And you can choose to eat it when it's six inches long, or a foot long, or 18 inches long. It's not an, this rhubarb is not an easy plant to store after you've harvested. You can usually keep it in a refrigerator if it's wrapped for a week or two, but it could start to go bad after that. So if we want to store it, we'll often can it, go through a canning process in jars, or freeze it in little bags or boxes that we can put in the freezer. We sell our rhubarb at the farmer's market in Manchester and also here at the farm. We also sell it to Fort Wayne, uh, Three Rivers Food Co-op. How do you eat rhubarb? I think people should know that rhubarb isn't as tart as people think it is. Tart is like lemons. 
Um, when you have lemons, you, you make lemonade, but you don't just make lemonade, you put some sugar in it. The same with rhubarb. When you cook rhubarb, like for a sauce, you put some sugar in it so that it's not so tart. I like to make a rhubarb sauce to eat it. Um, you just chop it up in small pieces and cook it. It makes like sauce, like an applesauce, but it's rhubarb. And it's a little bit red. Um, I also I like to make rhubarb dream bars, which is like a, a cookie bar. Uh, it has egg and sugar and rhubarb on top of a crust. I like to eat rhubarb and rhubarb crisp with a little bit of milk on it. Or I like it in rhubarb dream bars. This is a kind of top of the line. There you could you could probably energize your body for working on the farm out of rhubarb dream bars. <laughs> Thanks for visiting Joyfield Farm and learning all about rhubarb with Farmer Cliff and Farmer Arlene. Let's remember to thank our farmers for producing delicious food for us all to eat.